right, so today we're going to go through uh, some different deadlift variations and we're going to discuss um, some major cues you'd want to give people when you're teaching them how to do a deadlift as well as talk about um, some different variations and why you would choose maybe a conventional deadlift versus a sumo deadlift. Um, and then at the end we'll also talk about Romanian deadlifts. So um, Caleb is my client here. So first off, teaching Caleb how to do a proper conventional deadlift. Uh, that's where we're going to start for today. So um, first you'd like to instruct your client to pick up the bar. Um, so Caleb, you can pick up the bar there. Uh, first cue you might want to give them is how wide um, should my grip placement be when I'm grabbing the bar? For most people, whenever we're doing these conventional deadlifts, we want hands just outside of hips there. So uh, you can see Caleb's hands are in a pretty good position just outside of hips. Um, once we have a good bar placement, uh, the one thing to really keep in mind with our conventional deadlift is it's a very hip dominant exercise. So um, when Caleb starts going through the lift, he wants to make sure to initiate by pushing his hips back behind him and keeping that bar nice and close into the body. So Caleb pushing his hips back there, um, dropping the bar down. Now, as far as depth, um, ideally when we're doing a deadlift, we want to go until we lose a neutral position within the spine. So you can see Caleb, he's pretty flexible through the hips there, so he can probably go a little bit deeper and then we're just waiting for that point, maybe just a uh, shift sideways there, Caleb, so you can see it from the camera. Um, you can just kind of watch to pick it out. You can see if Caleb keeps going all the way down, if he was trying to touch that bar, see how he starts to drop through his spine. That's what we want to get away from now. Obviously, there's usually going to be plates on that bar, so you're not going to be going down that low, but uh, if you're working with somebody with poor hip mobility, um, you might see them start to drop through their chest just at the point when they get that bar, yeah, just below their knees. So obviously, if you had someone like that, you might want to um, cut that deadlift off a little sooner or else another good variation is if you're lifting somewhere that has blocks um, You can put blocks up underneath the bar so when the person lowers the bar It doesn't go as close to the ground and they can come straight back up um, And then the other thing we didn't really touch on uh, I'll touch a little bit about foot placement here. So um, with our conventional deadlift feet are shoulder width apart just like Caleb's were and then our weights should be um, center to the back part of our foot the entire time through our deadlift, okay? We just want to make sure not to get that weight up into our toes. Um, and then the other thing we touched on again, another major point is making sure that bar stays in nice and close to the body the whole time and we don't get into that habit of reaching the bar out away from us, okay? So um, those are all the major things with the conventional deadlift. So now we're going to move on and uh, discuss a sumo deadlift. So. Uh, another variation to that. So if you're teaching someone to do a sumo deadlift, now what we're going to do is get those feet nice and wide apart. So feet are quite a bit wider than shoulder width and your toes are also going to point slightly outwards. So Caleb's toes are pointing slightly outwards there. Um, and then our grip placement again is pretty much shoulder width apart, just like our conventional, only now you're going to notice when we do the sumo deadlift, our arms are actually coming in between our knees instead of outside. So the mechanics after that are pretty much the exact same. So sinking hips back, um, the only thing you'll notice a little bit different about the sumo is uh, Caleb is able to keep his chest in a little bit more of an upright position. So uh, his torso is a little more vertical in comparison to the conventional deadlift um, when his torso is really facing the ground. So you can just see do one more there, Caleb. So he's able to keep his chest uh, fairly upright. Again, this is a good variation of a deadlift for people with uh, hip mobility issues because they don't actually have to get as much range of motion through their hips to complete the lift. So they're able to keep a little bit more of an upright torso there um, and it's a little bit easier on their back as well when they're doing those. Uh, and then another little comparison of sumo to conventional. Um, when you're in that wide position and because of the placement of the bar, uh, you're going to get a little bit more activation through your quads, so through the front of your legs as well as in your groin, your adductor area when you're doing that lift, just because of the placement of the feet. Um, and then moving on from that, we'll briefly talk about uh, a Romanian deadlift, or some people call it a stiff leg deadlift. So uh, when we get into this variation, you'll notice uh, in the conventional, in the sumo, 
we were very we were very hip dominant through the exercise, but we were getting a little bit of motion through our knees as well. So when we get into this stiff leg or Romanian deadlift, now what we're going to do is we're going to a little bit of a soft bend in those knees. But once my knees are soft bent from the start, they're going to stay in that position for the entire duration of the lift. So now it's just going to completely come through my hips. So you can see Caleb doing a good demo there. He'll go from the side. So he's got a little bit of a soft bend in his knees and then from there it's just all through your hips. And again, uh, talking about depth, same thing as the conventional. We want to go um, until that person starts to lose that nice flat back. So uh, for most people, again, it varies a little bit depending on your hip mobility, but for most people that'll be uh, into a position where that bar is just below your knees and then you're going to come back up into a nice tall standing position and um, everything else, foot placement, hand placement, uh, weight towards the middle center of your feet um, or starting middle back of your feet is going to be the exact same uh, with the Romanian deadlift as it is with the conventional. Um, and the one last little thing to talk about um, is Caleb's kind of using a normal grip there when you're doing deadlifts. Uh, another option you have is to use what we call an alternating grip. So, uh, one hand forward, the other hand soup made on the bar. Uh, a lot of people really prefer this, especially once you get up and load. Uh, you're lifting some pretty heavy weights with your deadlifts. A little bit easier, you have more grip strength with there. Uh, you're less likely to fail by actually letting go of the bar if you're using this alternating grip um, in comparison to just the standard grip. And yeah, that's everything on the deadlifts.